Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from premiumbeat.com and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create a wedding title. Here we are inside of After Effects and we're gonna be working with a variety of shape layers and working a little bit with text. This is a very easy tutorial to do, so let's just go ahead and get started. So if you're in a time crunch and you need a professional wedding title right now, what I suggest doing, head over to Rocket Stock and there's this great template that has tons of wedding titles for you to use in all your wedding videos and they're all professional and they look amazing. So if you're in a time crunch, go ahead and check this project file out. So I'm gonna go and create a new composition and I'm gonna call it tutorial. And I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23.976 frames per second. And this will just depend if you're gonna overlay this on footage and you need to match it up to the right uh, frame rate and frame size. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna click okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go here at the top to the shapes here and we're gonna grab the ellipse tool. And all we're gonna do is come here, hold down shift on our keyboard and we're gonna draw a perfect circle. So my circle already has a stroke on it. So you might need to come here, turn off the fill. If I click on the word fill here off the top and just set it to none and click okay. And then you might need to click on the word stroke and set it to a solid color. And we'll use a uh, pixel count of 10 and that should be all good. And let's go up to window align. So if we go to our align tab here, we can click on our center uh, alignments here and this will be perfectly centered in the middle of our composition, which is what we want. And we, of course, if we hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and we double click the pan behind tool, our anchor point will be directly in the middle. So we can hit S on our keyboard for scale and we can just scale this up, you know, proportionally and have this the exact size that we want it. And that's looking pretty good. And you know what, maybe we'll set this down to a pixel count of three to make it just really thin. I think that'll look nice. So now what we need to do is go inside the shape layer, go into the contents, go into the add button over here and let's add the trim paths. And let's open the trim paths and let's set the end here to 0% and let's add a keyframe for end and let's go forward by maybe three seconds and set this to 100%. So now we just have this very easy basic animation here and now this will be animating on and it looks fine. And of course, let's go inside the ellipse here, go inside the stroke and let's set the uh, line cap to a round cap. So it's gonna help kind of be rounded out on the edge there. So it's not a, you know, a perfect edge. So it blends in just a little bit better. And now we can actually start creating some of these actual, I guess, floral objects, flowers, branches, whatever you want. We're gonna keep it kind of basic, but with these techniques, you'll be able to create whatever you want. So let's go ahead and grab the pen tool here at the top and let's zoom in here. And let's just kind of create a branch and you can be creative with it. Just click point on the ellipse here and you know, kind of draw out this nice uh, bezier curve. Hold down shift to draw out, the, uh, to drag out the uh, handles here. And we can kind of create some nice, interesting, you know, branch effects. So maybe we come over here, we have like this nice curve and then maybe we can click off of it and go back to the pen tool and we can turn off the mask by clicking on the toggle mask and shape path visibility button down here. And we can add like another offsetting branch like this and just kind of curve it out. And you know, that's looking, that's looking pretty interesting. And then of course we can continue add on this. So maybe we'll have, you know, another branch popping out right here. And maybe if we go back to our selection tool, we can draw, drag out this, you know, anchor point a little bit and drag this out just by a touch. And then, you know, we can continue to add some branches here. So maybe I'll add like another, um, you know, stem here. So maybe we'll do something like this. You know, and that's, you know, pretty good for this tutorial, I think. So, and that's looking all good. So let's go here to the contents, click on the word contents, go to add, and let's add a group. And let's put all these shapes in here inside the group layer. And we can come here and rename the group layer to branch or branches. And you just hit enter on your keyboard to rename that. And now let's go over here to the top. Let's grab the ellipse tool and let's just zoom in here. And what we're gonna do is kind of add like these circle leaves and you know, whatnot. So kind of hold down shift, draw out a perfect circle. And we can come here and reposition this. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to turn off the stroke and we're gonna to wanna to turn on the fill. So come here, click on the word fill and turn that on. Now, of course you can get customizable with this. You can actually draw out a perfect leaf. You can you know, really add anything that you want, maybe a heart if you're trying to be romantic with it. Uh, but we'll just use ellipse tools for this tutorial. And once that's in there, come here and make sure the ellipse is selected. Go up to edit, duplicate. And we can come over here and just start matching these up on top of the branches and it'll kind of blend there nicely. So now we want to animate these branches on. So, so let's go back to the contents here and let's add another group and we'll add these ellipses into this new group and we can call this one, I don't know, leaves or flowers or something, it doesn't matter. 
And now we have this. Now we want to animate this on. So let's go to add and let's add the trim pass effect once more. And we can go in here and we can turn off the mask here and we can you know, kind of see what's happening here. So we want this to come on from the bottom. So we'll just go to end here and we'll add a keyframe for end <laughs> and a lot of ends there. And we'll go to one second and we'll set this to 100%. Now we have this animating on and what we need to do is be able to have this set up to where we can duplicate it along this entire circle path. So what you need to do is make sure the anchor point is in the middle of your composition. I mean the layer anchor point is the middle of your composition. And what we need to do is make sure to turn on title safes down here. And if you have this anchor point in the middle of this crosshair here, that means it's in the middle of your composition. If not, you need to go to the pan behind tool and you need to grab this anchor point and do your best to position this in the middle of the actual composition here. But in this case, it's perfect. And what we can do is hit R on our keyboard for the uh, branch shape layer here. And we can come here and let's say we want this first one to be right here when once our animation uh, starts here. So let's just make sure this is perfectly aligned, which is looking right there. So we'll come here and rename this to, you know, branch one. And we'll call this bottom layer here down here, circle. And that's looking good. And then we come to branch one. Let's duplicate the layer. And of course, let's offset it in time, maybe by a second, hit R on our keyboard for rotation. And let me just zoom into this comp real fast. And we kind of just need to offset it by a little bit. So now that's gonna come on right there. And then we'll come here, duplicate this again, bring it over, hit R on our keyboard for rotation and just offset the animation by a touch. And we'll do one more, duplicate it, offset it, move forward in time, hit R on your keyboard for rotation and we'll, it, we'll bring it to like maybe right here. So let's say we want to create some variation. We want to grab the pen tool again and just, you know, maybe go on the outside of the circle this time and set the fill off, you know, turn that off and go to the stroke and we'll turn that on as well and set it back to, you know, three pixels here. So now we have like another variation. Maybe we'll call this one uh, flowers. And then let's go into the branch here and let's go into contents and let's copy the trim paths, go to the beginning of the timeline and paste it into our new flower layer here. So now we'll just have that animation in there. We don't have to recreate it from scratch. So now we have to go back through this and figure out when this animation should come on at the perfect time. So maybe like right here. And then we'll come here, duplicate the layer, hit R on our keyboard for rotation. Maybe we'll bring this on over here. Okay, so now that I have offsetted everything and put everything in its position, we're looking really good. Of course, you can go really crazy with detail. This is kind of more minimalistic and simple, but of course, you know, now you have the concept of how to do this. So let's go ahead and add some text in here. And the thing with wedding titles, it seems like the script format seems to be a really good, uh, you know, typeface to go with. So I'm using the font Shelby. And of course, if you have Adobe Creative Cloud and you can easily search up these typefaces in the Adobe type kit, you go under script. And of course they have a great library for these script fonts. So we'll come over here and I'm using the font, uh, sorry, the typeface Shelby. And maybe we'll just type out the word Shelby. And we'll also use the typeface name for it. So come here, type out your text and maybe we'll come here and do like a plus and then, and then we'll type out, and then I'll go here and just paste in my next font that I'll be using, which is uh, Bernino, and we'll come here and scrunch this up here with the, uh, some of the tools are here on the side, and make sure we just want to keep this nice in the center, and of course what I suggest doing, make sure you have the center alignment, and of course I would make sure to have the uh, center text under the paragraph tab to make sure that, you know, you can easily change things a little bit later, and we'll just make sure this is scrunched up, and then when we're done here, go to the line tab, and we'll just center this up completely. And then we can grab like another uh, title in here and we'll use the other font I was talking about, Bernino. And we'll come here and type out the date or something like that. So maybe we'll do like 07 uh, period 17 period, I don't know, 17. I thought that was interesting. And we can come in here, make this a little bit smaller and also center align that as well. And now we just got to animate the text in. And I'm actually going to use some animation presets because I think for this type of thing, we can keep it nice and slow. We kind of want like a slow fade on. So we're going to just use some animation presets and we can come over here, go into the uh, effects and presets, go inside the animation presets, go to the text folder, go into the blurs and let's use evaporate. So we'll use evaporate for our uh, main title here. And we'll just come here and drag this on top of our title here. And if we hit U on our keyboard, which will bring up the keyframes select both these keyframes, right click them, go to keyframe assistance and click on time reverse keyframes. And this way 
Those will kind of nicely blur on just like that. And that looks beautiful. And maybe we can just like bring this in just a little bit closer. And maybe we'll hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy, ease keyframes. And then for our, you know, our date down here, let's go into animate in and let's do a slow fade on. I think that should be interesting. And that looks beautiful. And of course, come here, maybe make these easy ease keyframes as well. And then what I suggest doing as well, maybe just go to your flowers and branch and circle layers here. Hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes and just select all the keyframes like this and hit F9 on your keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes as well. So now we're looking really good. Of course, remember to turn on motion blur for all your layers, turn it on at the top. And what I suggest doing, if you're gonna bring this into Adobe Premiere, try to export this with an alpha channel. So we can go over here to composition, add the render queue, and maybe come into the lossless and we can set this to say like a quick time format, go to format options, set this to a ProRes uh, Quad 4 right here, which is basically gonna give you an alpha channel if it's on a transparent background, which in this case it is. And you can just drop this on top of your live action footage inside of Premiere, Final Cut Pro, or whatever you're using. So that's always something cool to keep in mind. And if you are following along with this tutorial, this is a, what you should have gotten, something just like this, minus the background. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.